Hey, good Tuesday morning. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone. This is your tropical update around 10 a.m. on September the 13th and September the 13th. Why we are uh, technically past the very peak or the statistical peak of hurricane season. We are still in the peak of the season here and things are generally inactive. You can see there on your map. We are tracking a couple of tropical waves, but there's no named storms. There's not even any depressions out there. Could that change soon? It's possible the two tropical waves we're watching, the one leading ahead there, the one further to the west, has the better chance of trying to organize some over the next couple of days through the next about five days or so. And uh, just putting a quick little timeline on it and where this thing is headed, it's heading to the west and still very far away from the United States, so no imminent threats to the U.S. at this point. But the uh, Lesser Antilles, the islands out here, maybe something they want to keep an eye on as we go through the next uh, five days or so, you'll notice it's going to be near the Lesser Antilles, the Windward Islands by around Friday and then into the weekend. The system, whatever it may be, could be closer to Puerto Rico or the islands of Hispaniola. We're talking Dominican Republic and Haiti, so still no imminent threat to the US, but the islands uh, and the greater Antilles, certainly something to be keeping an eye on as we go through the end of this week and into the weekend as the system might try to organize some. Now, when you look at it on satellite, we're calling this Invest 96 as of this morning. It's not pretty, meaning it does not have significant organization to it. Now, something it did do overnight was we did see the storms be more concentrated uh, in a concentrated area overnight, and that can sometimes allow these tropical waves to somewhat organize, but it's still struggling quite a bit. Now, it's moving west at 16 miles an hour, but when you look at the moisture content around this, and we're talking water vapor here, it paints the uh, picture that this thing is not in the prettiest or best environments. There's a ton of dry air on the north side. There's a ton of dry air on the south and west sides as well. Now, one thing this wave does have working for it, it's a pretty big wave, and sometimes these large envelopes of moisture can fight off the dry air, but there is a lot of dry air. And you notice there's even some dry air closer to the southern side of this. So. It's got a ways to go. It's not looking significantly organized, but it may try to do it over the coming days. Now, when you look at some of our models here and timing this thing out and some of the obstacles ahead of it, uh, dry air seems to be maybe one of the biggest obstacles. It doesn't have a lot of wind shear over it right now, and it's probably not gonna have a lot of wind shear in the area over the next three to four days. Now, by this weekend, may start to feel some wind shear once it's towards the islands and um, just something we'll have to watch. Now, another part of this forecast is, well, how much land interaction does it have? If it gets to the islands and it's not very organized, well, then it may never really have a chance to organize if it spends a lot of time interacting with the islands out here. This is through next Monday. Notice still somewhere in the greater Antilles. So just really pending in that message that this thing is not anywhere close to being a big problem for the, U the United States. Now, with this tropical wave, something we'll want to watch long term is the steering patterns into next week. If the tropical wave is still there and survives and there's enough of it, uh, the steering pattern next week is something that we'll want to watch. Now, what we'll have, uh, it looks like developing, is a ridge of high pressure over the eastern United States. And whenever you get a ridge of high pressure developing over the eastern United States, it can create a pattern that can push a tropical wave west, maybe into the southern Gulf, um, or just get anything close to the Gulf of Mexico. So that's what we'll be watching in the seven to 10 day time frame. Um, but also at the same time, it's a very nuanced forecast. If this ridge is just a little bit weaker and we have a trough trying to come down over here, it may try to tug something out to the, the Atlantic here. So kind of a split forecast scenario there, depending on what the steering pattern does or what the steering pattern does next week. And there's still a lot of uncertainty with it. Now we'll keep an eye on it. Every tropical wave in the peak of the season that's trying to approach the Caribbean islands, we keep a close eye on it for you. But right now, it's too early to speculate what this will do in the long time frame. Uh, we'll be watching guidance. We'll be watching the models here and there, but they're going to be jumping around doing what they typically do with a system that's unorganized and not looking well developed at all. And as it stands right now, the system is not developed at all. It's still just a unorganized area of a few showers and storms in the Atlantic. But the more imminent areas that are the more imminent concern is going to be for the Puerto Rico area, the U.S. British Virgin Islands as we head into this weekend. Just be checking in daily to make sure there's no big updates, but we will be following it. And everyone's been asking what's the next name if we do get a name system anytime soon. It's Fiona. So Fiona is our next name on the list. And after Fiona, 
it is Gaston. But other than that, nothing to really uh, big concern in the United States. A lot of us are dealing with some pretty pleasant weather over the next several days. Warm temperatures, but nothing too wild here in the United States. That's going to do it for your Tuesday morning, about 10 a.m. tropical update. Thanks for joining. I'm meteorologist Peyton Mullum.